train this stuff? Well, there's a lot of ways. Okay? So before I get into that, we can say, all right, I could ask you the question, what is each one of these cars, right? So it, it's not yellow, orange, yellow, right? <laughs> you know, that's just the color. Um, <clears throat> we could talk about what actually those cars are, and I think the first one's kind of a, it looks like a Corvette. It looks like some weird model of a Corvette. It might be a some type of concept car. My uh, second one kind of looks like a Lamborghini, not 100% sure. And the other one, L, I don't know, Type R. It's some type of Toyota, um, whatever that is. Anyway, so the idea is, can you discriminate between those things? And maybe you can, maybe you can't. Um, but <clears throat> we could train you to, right? So to develop stimulus control, the first thing we're going to do is make that discriminative stimulus distinct. We're going to make it clear. We're not going to be, you know, we don't put a, you know, for a stoplight, you don't put a red light up and a slightly less red light up, you know, one means go, one means stop. You have, you know, dramatic differences between those lights, right? Um, you know, same thing with these cars. There's dramatic differences between the cars. At least between the two yellow ones, there's dramatic differences. There's fewer differences between the yellow one and the orange one other than color, right? But the, the shape is going to be similar. They're both more sporty. Uh, they're both lower, you know, that type of thing. So, you, you know, it, uh, in order to be able to discriminate between these different cars, you want to make them as distinct as possible. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing that you want to do is minimize error, right? You can add verbal cues, right? Uh, to, to help you make incorrect responses impossible. This gets back to something called errorless discrimination training, which uh, we'll talk a little bit about in, in another context. But the idea is that you want to get people reinforced for proper behavior. You want to spend more time trying to get them to get it right and reduce the amount of errors they're going to make. So if I show you that first car, and I say something to the effect, I could add a verbal cue, I say, here's, the, okay, the first car is going to be a Chevrolet. A Chevrolet makes one really fancy sports car, and that really fancy sports car is a, and you answer it, say Corvette. I say, you're right, it's a Corvette. So let me show you the picture. Here's a picture. What is this? This is a Corvette, right? The idea there is that I've added so many verbal cues that you basically can't get it wrong. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And then we can start to do that again with the next one. A Lamborghini looks like this or whatever. And we can go through and do the verbal cues until I show you the picture. And so this is a Lamborghini. Now I can show you the two pictures. Say, okay, choose the Corvette. And you choose the Corvette. And then I would change the stimulus a little bit, get a different picture of a Corvette, different color, picture from a different angle, you know, that type of thing. And so I'm really teaching you that what that Corvette looks like as a whole versus the Lamborghini. Right? Lots of opportunities. So give people lots of chances to learn this stuff. You, you're never going to learn the differences, the, the, the fine details between a Corvette and a Lamborghini the very first moment you're looking at it. You're not going to learn all of them. You'll learn some really obvious ones. But the more you keep trying each one of those, learning about those discriminations and learning to tell the difference between those things, uh, the more information you're going to be able to pick out. You might even ultimately be able to see a small little piece of the car and identify what it is. Um, I've been involved in the car show world and the car club world for a lot of years now. And one of the things that we do is judge cars, right? So we, you know, car shows, we've got to do the judging and evaluation of the cars in order to give out the trophies and all that fun stuff. And part of that judging is about discriminating what is a quality paint job, and it seems easy on the surface, right? What's a quality paint job and what's not? Well, when you've got two $10,000 paint jobs sitting next to each other, how, to, how do you tell the difference between them? Right? It's not easy. And, um, you have to look for small little things, uh, and the idea is that you learn to discriminate what makes a perfect paint job and what doesn't. You know, same thing goes for cleaning a car. You know, who spent? You know, how did they did they clean it perfectly? Did they clean everything, including behind the brakes? You know, stuff like that. So we actually get down to that level of detail when we're doing car show judging and stuff. Uh, but the idea is, I've had a lot of trials, and you know, I've been doing that since what? No, oh, I don't know, ninety two. Right? So I've had a lot, of, a lot of opportunity to learn how to discriminate between a 100-point uh, car, a 90-point car, an 80-point car, and so on and so forth. Right? And you can also use rules. That really helps. Again, this is a, there's a verbal requirement here. But using rules is a very useful feature, and it allows that learner to know what's going on. In fact, when we teach people about how to do judging for car shows, and you know, we, we actually have a video, and we walk people through, and we, we, we have the, the rules listed. And so we list rules one, two, three, four, five, and then examples of those rules, and then do another set of rules one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. And it just makes it clearer for people to be able to discriminate between um, <clears throat> the types of things you would see if you're judging a car show, right? So in order to be a quality judge, it's all about stimulus control. 
All right, I'll talk to you again soon. Enjoy.